hey, if you're looking to start an e-commerce business and you need to work on a set of financial projections to pitch to investors, uh, then you've come to the right place because we have built a couple of different e-commerce financial projection templates that are built specifically for that purpose. And uh, I'm gonna walk you through uh, two of our different templates today. Um, I have linked to these templates in the description of the video below. And so you can go grab the template and then uh, follow along and fill it out with us as we as we walk through how to fill this out. Um, the two different templates we're gonna focus on uh, are general e-commerce template uh, and then uh, an e-commerce with a subscription component. So if you sell items uh, just through general e-commerce, but you also have the ability for customers to uh, subscribe and get like a monthly um, a monthly box or something like that uh, shipped to them, uh, we have that uh, set up as well. And so um, we're going to show you how to fill this out. Uh, but first of all, uh, my name is Adam Huxima. I'm the co-founder of Projection Hub. And over the last 10 years, uh, we've helped thousands of entrepreneurs create financial projections for uh, investors and lenders and, and internal planning. Um, and so happy to uh, dive into this e-commerce template now and just show you how to fill it out. Okay, so we're going to start here at the end, actually. And so once you have uh, entered in all of your assumptions, um, you're going to uh, get a nice uh, at a glance tab like this with uh, profit and loss at a glance, uh, some key charts and tables, uh, use of startup funds, uh, sources and uses of funds, and then some uh, key performance indicators for uh, for your e-commerce business that investors are going to be looking at. Um, you'll also get a five-year income statement summary, five-year cash flow summary, a five-year balance sheet, and then an income statement, cash flow, and balance sheet uh, for each of the five years broken down by month. So that's kind of the end in mind. Let's jump back to the beginning of the template here where we'll enter in our assumptions and, and show you how we get there. Um, so the first thing you need to know is that any cell that's highlighted in blue is an assumption that you can change without breaking anything in the model. And so what we can enter our start month for the projections, uh, we can add investor funding here. So we're assuming here in this example, a $500,000 uh, seed round. And then we're gonna uh, have just a little bit of fixed assets, some employee equipment, maybe a trademark for our brand. Um, we're also gonna ask for a $350,000 business loan that maybe to help us uh, purchase inventory. And this table down here is gonna show us whether we think our starting cash is sufficient. So this is taking into consideration what we're paying for startup costs like uh, fixed assets um, out of the gate, but also how much working capital are we gonna need until we break even? And so based on the assumptions that we've put in on these other tabs, uh, the model is assuming that we need 34 months to reach positive cash flow uh, and, and a total working capital need of 710,000. So between the $500,000 equity investment and the $350,000 uh, loan, uh, we have sufficient cash to get started. So here is the revenue tab uh, for the e-commerce model. Um, and so the assumption here is that you're going to have a, sorry, uh, how are we going to get that visitor acquisition? So um, we are going to have an advertising budget that uh, has a cost per click, drives visitors to the site along with organic visitors. It gives us our total number of website visitors. And we have a conversion rate of those visitors to give us a total number of orders. My conversion rate is way too high for e-commerce, so we'll bring that back down to, to earth here at a uh, 1% and what we probably ought to do because that's going to uh, really beat up on our revenue goals here. So let's say we're going to, um, let's increase that uh, ad spend per year uh, to help us make up for that. And maybe we get a little bit, uh, find some cheaper um, advertising sources as well. And maybe our organic visitors, we're really focused on SEO. And so maybe we start out, uh, maybe we start out with 500 uh, organic and word of mouth visitors here. Okay, and then, um, 
you can see we can add our items per order, number of items purchased, and then uh, we can add our different products or product categories. And when these um, product offerings are going to launch, when they're gonna be made available. So we say, right now, we're just gonna have one product available in month one, then we'll be adding new products basically every six months. And then you can also add an end month. So if you say, okay, product category one, this is our prototype and we know we're gonna end up making version 2.0 later. Um, so we could say, okay, this product's only available for the first 12 months and then we transition to maybe this new, new and improved version, right? Um, so just for example, let's, let's increase some of these price points here. And you can see um, you've got a, a cost per product. We're assuming right here in the equation, we're assuming a 35% cost of goods sold. And you can adjust that, of course, based on your specific cost of goods sold. And then also a cost of shipping and packaging uh, that's paid by the seller. And then this, um, this is a little bit uh, tricky here, but if you uh, bear with me, um, I think this ends up making life easier for you. So instead of having to predict exactly how many units uh, per SKU or particular product, um, what we've done is tried to give you the ability to enter a product's relative popularity. And so um, if you start with one as a baseline, a product with a relative popularity of two is gonna sell twice as many units as a one. A product with a relative popularity of 10 is gonna sell 10 times as many units as a product with a relative popularity of one. So that gives you an idea of, um, of how this would work. So if you were looking at just these two, category one and two, and you had a one product at a one and the other product at two, essentially what that means is this product is gonna sell two thirds of the total products is gonna be category two and one third of the products are gonna be category one. So hopefully that makes some sense um, for you as you fill this out. And please don't hesitate to reach out with questions on that. We'd be happy to, to help you fill this table out um, for your specific use case again. All right, so you can add annual uh, price growth for your uh, different items as well, and a annual cost growth rate as well. And that'll help you project your total revenue and uh, total direct expenses. And then as we jump over to our input other expenses tab, uh, we have the ability to add a number of different um, expenses here. We can categorize them into different uh, key categories, expense categories. And then we can uh, set whether that expense is a fixed dollar amount, meaning it's the same dollar amount each month, or is it a percentage of revenue? So like a payment processing fee, a credit card processing fee might be the same or might be a percentage of revenue. So we could um, select that. Um, or uh, a per FTE, so like a remote office expense. If you have remote office uh, workers, you might have a per FTE remote office expense. And speaking of employees, you have the ability here to add um, salaried employees and then also um, a scaling staff team. Uh, so what this allows you to do is say, I wanna add the, you can add more team members down here, different types of positions. But in this example, I'm gonna add one customer support team member for every 100,000 in monthly revenue. And so uh, as that monthly revenue increases, your customer support um, uh, team will increase or scale with it. So you don't have to be worried about um, as your sales grow, you know you're gonna to have to increase staffing as well. And this helps you kind of do that automatically in the model. So if those, if there are positions that you know will need to increase or be added as sales um, increase, you can just add those down here. And then uh, the last thing I wanted to do is just jump over to the uh, e-commerce and subscription template real quick and just show you uh, what the difference would be 
if you uh, have a subscription model. Um, so you're, you're really going to have the same basic revenue model for e-commerce, e but you'll also have the ability to add subscription revenue here. And so you can say what percentage of the website visitors are going to convert into subscribers. You can add an annual churn rate, then different subscription uh, levels or packages, launch months, how much subscription revenue you're generating, what the cost is, the cost of goods sold for that um, particular level, and then the uh, shipping cost, and again, the relative popularity. And so that will allow you to add um, subscribers. And then you'll get um, a, an extra set of KPI data here uh, because um, you'll have some of the subscriber data. You'll be able to you know, get monthly recurring revenue and annual recurring revenue numbers from, um, from the subscriber data, subscriber lifetime value, customer lifetime value, that sort of thing. Um, that are some additional investor uh, KPIs that uh, will be useful to you. Uh, but again, that will bring you all back to, well, I'll just stick on this sheet and show you, um, then your, uh, you know, your P&L profit and loss at a glance and, and uh, be able to see uh, how you're going to perform based on those assumptions that you've got entered. Uh, so again, if you have any questions, if you need to customize the model, uh, please don't hesitate to leave us a comment in the uh, comment section of the video below or reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com and we'd be happy to uh, follow up with you and try to help uh, make this model work uh, exactly for your business model. So, um, and again, the, the last thing I'd mention is just that um, uh, we have linked to both of these, the, the standard e-commerce and the e-commerce subscription template in the video description below. So if you want to go grab those, you can do that now. Right, thanks.